There are all kinds of forms of tyranny. The obvious ones are of nations, but there are tyrants large and small. We say petty tyrants, as well as the mega tyrants. You talk, start talking about tyrants and the finger pointing begins. We, we all have the ones that we might identify, or at least many people would. I suppose different people would identify different tyrants. We can identify tyrants by name, but how about, how about by character or by nature or dynamic? What is it that makes somebody tyrannical? We might say controlling. That's a like a really edgy word to use about somebody, right? They're, they're very controlling. So we might say controlling, but actually control can be beautiful. Order can be beautiful, right? In fact, without some kind of order and control, there's chaos. So tyranny isn't just about control. It's about a control that is uncomfortable, that doesn't sit well somehow, that isn't natural, that isn't intrinsic, that's imposed. And what is it that imposes control in, in human experience in a way that is not intrinsic, not in tune? Any ideas? Well, it'd be fair to say it's consciousness, w would it not? I don't know that the, the dogs of the world have collaborated and are creating a dog control or the ants or the birds or whatever. It's not just our animal nature as human beings or our physical nature, it's consciousness. It's, a, it's the way we think, the way we think, the way we feel. That can be disconnected from a larger order of things, from a cosmic order, we might say, that we on this planet take part in. And when there's an order that's imposed by human consciousness that ignores the, ignores the intrinsic order of people of the planet, that cuts across those things, it's tyrannical. It is a, tyrannical by its nature, and therefore repulsive, something we just inherently want to reject. So shall we together embrace divine order, divine intelligence? Commit ourselves to that and letting it come through. Talking about law. How do we see law? Something imposed by others? I looked up the origin of the word. It's from an old English word. It means about something about laying something down. It comes from a verb that has to do with laying something down. We have something to lay down, which is the order of the universe as it applies to our lives and this world that we share together. Laying down the law. Can you imagine a good way to lay down the law? If we do it together and it's out of something higher, let's lay down the law. In the book of Job, there's a, a test that is given as it's referred to. So. If you know the story of Job, it's a tale of woe as we think of it, right? The story of Job. He's, he goes through all these miseries, all this disease and all these trials, and, it, and, and he doesn't give up. That's the beautiful thing about Job. And he, he blesses the creator through it all. He, he's living through it all. His, his Wife is on him, telling him, you know, he should curse God and die, basically. Um, but he just keeps going. He's a, he's a uh, 
a proud man in the truest sense of the word. And towards the end of the story, um, there's this examination of him. He's asked all these things um, as a way of proving his mettle and allowing him to fully take hold of the next cycle of creation, which it, he does. And he comes back to a really creative place. And all that's been seemingly taken from him is restored and more. But in that examination, one of the questions is, um, canst thou bring the ordinances of heaven and set them in the earth? Canst thou bring the ordinances, ordinances of heaven? When we think of ordinances, I well, at least I think of like parking, <laughs> parking laws or some, something. So it seems like trivial things, ordinances. But in it is the word order. Can you bring the order of heaven and set it in the earth? That's enlightened thinking. And there's acting involved too, because all the thinking in the world doesn't get relevant until it's acted upon. Canst, canst thou bring the ordinances of heaven and set them in the earth, in action, in physical form, and in building the house of God that we share together so that that place of consciousness that we share together is established by divine law, divine order, in terms of the thoughts and feelings, the emotions that we share together, consciously and subconsciously. And if that were true, do you think there would be a field of love and a field of divine order that we share together, a field of energy that was like that? Well, there already is, right? There already is that to whatever degree at Sunrise Ranch and four emissaries of divine light. But do you think that there are no tyrants in this field at all? <laughs> ever? <laughs> Does the tyrant ever show up? Until all tyrants perish, our work shall not be done. Let every voice be thunder. Let every heart be strong. So that this field can be strong and filled with the ordering power of love that creates all things. So that this may indeed in truth be the house of God. Not just because it already is, but because it's built by you and me in this day together. Thank you.